Here is a React app using V. It has JSX, it has state, we're importing CSS straight into JavaScript files, we have different components in different files, and it's all a little bit overwhelming in the beginning. But I wanna show you what a React app kinda looks like right now, and then in the rest of this video, I'm gonna take a big picture look at what React actually is, and how you can start working with React. Because React is the most popular front-end library for building applications that is declarative, it's component-based, and if you learn how to build apps with React, you're also able to easily learn how to build apps using React Native and React Desktop to build an entire cross-platform experience. But like I said, this isn't really a tutorial on how to use React, it's more of an overview on what React is, and I'll make more tutorial videos on React in the future. So if you're not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe now so you don't miss those videos. So let's start by making an app using just vanilla JavaScript and then we can compare that to the same app using React. So I'm going to start by making an index.html page here and this app is just going to be a button that someone can click and every time they click on that it's going to keep track of how many times it's been clicked and just display that in a p tag. So I'm going to need a p tag for the number of times it's been clicked and a button that someone can actually click. And then I'll give both of these an ID. So the P tag can be uh, clicked text and the button can be clicked button. And then I'll also need a JavaScript file. So I'll link to that. We'll just call this uh, vanilla.js. I'm gonna make the vanilla.js file. First thing I'm gonna do is grab those elements. So I'm gonna need the count, what did I call it? Uh, oh no, not clicked. Clicked text equals, um, that is not quite right, but close. And then the clicked button, that was right on. And then yes, I want a click event. And we're gonna keep track of the amount of times it's been clicked. So I'm just gonna create a variable for that. Uh, every time it's clicked, we'll increment that by one. And I'm gonna set the text of this element to be the count, but I'm actually going to put this in a template string. And there we go. So every single time this button is clicked, we will increment this count variable, and then we're gonna update that element's inner HTML to display what the current count is. So if we open the index.html file in Google Chrome, we should see this app working. I didn't put any text in that button. Uh, what should we put in here? Click me. Maybe I should have some default text like count zero. Okay, that's good enough. Let's refresh this, boom. Okay, click me, boom. And every single time it just increments by one. Isn't that nice? So there's two things I want us to pay attention to here. One is that we are managing the state and the UI independently of each other. So this P tag should always represent the current count that this variable has. But every single time we modify the value of this variable, every time we modify the state, we also have to make sure that this p tag is up to date with the current state. So we're always responsible for managing that. And in a small app, it's not too bad, but this will get more difficult as our app gets bigger. The other thing is that there isn't really a good plan for managing state. I just have this variable out here in the open. And even if I just went and tried to add another click button with another p tag here, I'd probably have to have like one and, and two. Uh, this isn't gonna scale well. I'm gonna start duplicating everything and it's just not a good plan for managing the state and the UI that really just needs to represent the current state. So let's take a look at how we would build this with React. And if we just look at what React is for a second, it's a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. So it's just a library that's gonna help us build a user interface. It's declarative. We don't specify how to update our UI like we are in this code. We just specify what our UI should represent and React will kind of handle the rest and we'll see that in a moment. It's component based, so there's a plan for separating out the individual pieces of our UI into separate components and separate files, which makes it easier to organize our code and makes it easier to code in general. And this last one here is interesting because of React Native and React Desktop that allow you to basically write the same code in the browser and for mobile apps and for desktop apps, and it will actually run natively on each system. But for us right now, it's just another browser library. So what I'm gonna do in my HTML file is comment out this existing code 
And because this is a library, the first thing I'm gonna do is import React using a CDN. And then I'm gonna create a react.js script file. And I'm not gonna create any HTML right now because React manages all of that UI for us. So I'm gonna create a react.js file. And I want that same p tag and button. And when you click the button, it just increments the count and that's displayed in the p tag. And that to me is a single component. And when we have some elements or some logic that can be represented as a single component, you put that in a function in React. So I'm gonna create a function called counter and every component starts with a capital letter. This isn't the same as a class or a constructor function. It is a different thing. And in here, I'm gonna create a count variable that is set to zero because in this component is where we manage the state and the UI. And remember, this isn't a tutorial. This is more of just an overview of React. So I'm gonna go a little bit faster through the code examples than I normally would. When we're working with React, we don't create our elements in HTML. We create all of them in our JavaScript files. So a component like this in a JavaScript file like this has to return what elements need to be made when we create this component. So I need to return my p tag and my button right here. And what I'm actually gonna do is return a div that contains the p tag and the button. And the way we do that in React is react create element. Uh, there's a div that will contain a p tag and that button, oh my God, Copilot, love you. And I don't really care about these IDs, so I'm gonna remove them. But for the button, we wanna detect an onClick event, and that is going to update the count by one value. But we actually need to modify this count variable first, because in React, this has to look like this, using react.useState so that any time this variable is updated using the set count, React will update the UI. And this is important because we don't have to tell React how to modify what the element is displaying. We are just saying that there is a p tag. That p tag contains this text and it contains this bit of state here, this count state. And any time that that is modified, React, you are responsible for making sure that just this piece of the UI is updated to represent that state. So this looks actually a bit messy, a bit weird, but let's just see this in action so that we can see it working. And there's nothing on the page because I forgot to do one thing, and that is we need an entry point to the React app. So I'm gonna create a div that has the ID root. It's gonna be where React starts inserting all of those elements. And then we create another script tag down here where I just grab that root node and tell it to render a counter component. And that's pretty much it. And again, don't really worry too much about the syntax right now. I just wanna see this working. So if we refresh the page, it should be the exact same behavior as before. But instead of using vanilla JS, we are now using React. And this is not actually how you'll ever write your React code. This looks kind of weird and a little bit messy and way more complicated than just the vanilla example. And usually how we would write this is by using a language called JSX, where we return basically the HTML or what the HTML might look like. So I'd have a div and then a p tag and then my button uh, and then, oh yeah, I guess it says click me. And let's close the div, there we go. Uh, again, I don't really care about these IDs right now because I'm not selecting them in JavaScript. They just exist in JavaScript as this React app, but it might look something more like this. And this is maybe a little bit cleaner, a little bit more concise. We have all of that logic in a single JavaScript file. It just exists here and we can see the state, the UI and everything as one neat component that we can then add into the application once or twice or many times, whatever. And there's a plan for managing the state. There's a plan for updating the UI to represent that state. And it all just kind of works nicely. However, the browser doesn't understand this. This isn't valid JavaScript, it's JSX. So in order to get this working, we need something that can convert this JSX into JavaScript. And this is where things become more interesting because the React community and the web dev community in general have have made a bunch of tools that do things like transpiling JSX or TypeScript or whatever into browser valid JavaScript. But there's also tooling that helps us import NPM modules into our browser apps and do hot module replacement so we can see updates instantly in the browser without losing our state. Tools for helping us write our CSS and building our apps for production and just so much more that anytime we go to create a new React app, 
we're not gonna do it like this. We're gonna first select a complete tool chain that does all of those things for us and then build a React app with that tool chain. So when we think of building React apps, although React is just this library that we can use like this, we think of it more as the entire tool chain. And there are many tool chains we can use to build React apps, but the most popular one I think is Create React App, but it's a little bit outdated. Most people don't like using it anymore. And the second most popular one, which I'm gonna show you right now is called Vite, Next Generation Frontend Tooling. There's also this thing called Next.js, which is a React framework for production. And it does so many things like rendering components on the server. This though is worth its own video, own series of videos. So I'm not really gonna talk about it today, but you should know that Next is something that you'll want to look at at some point as a React dev. For now, we're gonna use V, which is pretty easy to get started with. So to create a new React app using V, we just have to type in yarn create V. And then it's gonna ask us what our project name should be, my counter app. Then it's going to ask us what framework we wanna use and we just have to select React. Then it will also ask us if we wanna use TypeScript and I don't wanna, but you could. And then I'm just gonna open up my counter app in VS Code and we can see what this looks like. But actually first, let's run this app. I'm gonna CD into my counter app, then I have to install dependencies using yarn, and then I just have to run, give it a second, yarn dev. And this will set up a development server for some reason at 5173, usually it's localhost 3000, but this will host our app in development so that we can get a bunch of cool dev features. Uh, for starters, it just hosts our app there, so that's kind of cool. And this is the default landing page, and it already has a counter, which is kind of funny. Um, but if we go back into the app right now, there is a source directory, and this is where we're gonna spend most of our time. This is what we really care about. And right now, there is an app.jsx file, and see, that's a JSX extension because we are using that JSX syntax. At the top here, we're importing some things from the React library. We're also importing an SVG. We can just import images and other assets into these files. We're also importing a CSS file. So there's a lot of cool things that these tool chains do for us to make it easier to create components. And there's a bunch of this default code that I don't care about at all. So I'm gonna delete all of that and just have this div called app. And if I go back to the browser, I can see that it immediately reflects all of those changes. It deleted all of that stuff in the browser for me. So if I go and add like an H1 tag, hello, save this file, go back to the browser, it immediately appears there. And this is just one of the many things that you get out of using a tool chain like V. So it's a really, really, really handy thing to have in development. Uh, and what I wanna do now is recreate that counter app that I had in the beginning, but in Vite now. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more. I don't need that set count. I don't need the logo. I don't need use state in here. So I just have a basic app component. This is the entry point into my app. And I'm gonna create a new file for my counter component. So I'm gonna call this counter.jsx. Uh, I'm gonna export a default function called counter. This is my component, just like before. Uh, I do need to import that use state hook so that we can have some state in here uh, from React. Then I'll have the count and set count equals, come on copilot, there we go. Uh, then we'll return that JSX as before. So I want a div, I want a P tag, I want a button, I want click me and then we'll close that div, cool, okay. So here's that basic component again that's doing just what it did before. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is import that counter from counter, there we go. So I'm gonna import that component into this component. So in my app, I'm importing counter, and then I can just render that as if it were another HTML element. So uh, we'll just put a counter in here. And now if I go back into the browser, I should see that it's automatically refreshed. So we've got, hello, you clicked zero times. And if I click me, again, it's just that behavior from before. But I have organized my code quite nicely here. I have this counter component that is completely separate, completely self-contained. We have this state here that is managed within the component and any time that this state changes, the UI will reflect the state change. We don't have to link those up in any way other than just saying this P tag is gonna show the count whatever that value is. Another really cool thing is because this is just a completely self-contained component, I could create as many of these as I want. So let's just have, I don't know, five counters here. 
go back, refresh the page, and notice it refreshed without getting rid of any of that state, which makes development so much easier. But I also have all these components that manage their state separately, and I can just reuse them as much as I want. And just writing this code and organizing this code becomes much, much easier. We can also just import any client side NPM module we want in here. So if I wanted to make network requests, I could yarn add Axios, for example, and Veep will just manage that for us. Uh, I could then import Axios straight into my React project. I could have a button that on click goes and gets, uh, let's see, HTTPS API.Kanye.Rest, a random Kanye West quote. And we'll take that result and we'll put it into a quote piece of state. Uh, let's see if I closed my button tag, uh, get a quote, close the tag, there we go. Um, I'm gonna need a quote piece of state here. So let's grab that, cool. Uh, and then I could just say that's gonna be displayed in, uh, I don't know, an H1, why not? And just like that, I've broken the app. Let's see what I did wrong. Use state is not defined. You gotta remember to import use state from React. But now, there we go, I've got hello and I've got get a quote and that did not work because this is a JSON object and I'm gonna need the dot quote from there. I should really use console logs or something. All right, let's try this again, get quote, there we go. So now I also get a random Kanye West quote that is coming from a network request that I managed to get using the Axios library that I just installed straight into my React project. So this is another cool thing that you can do. There's so many cool things you can do just by using a nice tool chain for making React apps. But remember that all of this tooling only exists in development and localhost whatever isn't gonna exist in production. The browser has no idea what JSX is or how to import Axios this way. So when it's time to actually deploy this into production, we need to run yarn build and this will take everything we've written and compile it down into the html css and javascript files so if we go back here now and look at the dist folder when we're using v i'll be able to see that here is the index.html that will load into the browser and in this assets directory we have css and javascript this is the minified transpiled code that we will deploy into production. So when it's time to actually deploy the app, we just take these files right here in the dist folder and we could deploy them to a CDM, we could deploy them to an S3 bucket or just dump them into our express server or whatever. But this is the only thing that actually gets deployed. It's a simple library for managing our UI. But when we make a React app, we always use these tool chains. So it always seems like there's more going on but this is part of just the front-end developer experience and we happen to be using React as the library. But anyway, that is it for my overview of React. I will be making more videos in the future about how to use React, so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss those and leave me a comment on this video to let me know what you think of React.